And I'm feeling like mostly at the field workup. <laughs> I can barely see. But I'm here. Slater, what he told us. I will confess one thing though, I haven't actually finished. When I do, it will be over and I had to wait a ridiculously long time to get it. It's, it's fantastic, I love it and oh, the character of Dr. Hannah Wright has basically stolen my heart. But oh, what am I going to do when it's over, you know? We weren't allowed to take photos or videos, but if you are interested, like hearing what he said, the Santa put out a podcast where you can hear him talk a little bit. Okay, he was very entertaining, he told us a little uh, anecdotes, he told us about how he, when he first wrote the books, he wanted to travel to the Arctic, but he was poor, so he couldn't, so he just did all his research in the Bodleian. I was really excited, i never seen him speak before. And there was a lot of people, a lot, it was completely packed auditorium. There was a lot of uh, young people, uh, like myself, who, who probably were much younger when we read the history materials and now young adults. They're for the sequel. So it seems like this affable grandfather. Uh, so it's funny that he writes all these, uh, I don't know, chase and dead answer, but it's not regular to the answer because it's a lot more um, complex. Grey, you know, ex exploring all this, this darker theme. And I wonder if that's why his books are more popular than not The Hunger Games or Harry Potter or um, The Road Rings or Narnia. Because they're a lot more complex and it's a lot uh, harder to uh, say good guy, bad guy. I mean, his villains are so good. I mean, Mrs. Col Mrs. Coulter and Laura, they're like, they're amazing. During the, um, the, the talk, they're. There was a, a sign language interpreter and he, he told us how they had to make up a word for Damon in sign language because there wasn't one, because this wasn't a common word. He did a, he did a reading from the, from the Book of Dust. Uh, he makes great voices. I don't know if he's ever done all the words, but he'd be good at them. Uh, when I listened to his materials, it was a bit traumatizing because I like generally walking. Uh, I don't know, you know, sitting down, so I was just walking somewhere and it was like horrible things happening in my head. <laughs> anyway, so he's very sort of anti proper prose, he's just get to the point and no flowery language or anything like that. That's probably also why he doesn't particularly like talking. He told us about how he started writing by imitating others. How he liked Dylan's, Bob Dylan's and Dylan Thomas. <laughs> he supports the, the, the other theory, he says that Writing is uh, an exercise in tyranny, but reading is democracy because, you know, once you put the book out there, it's in, it's in the reader's hands, it's not in his anymore. Someone also asked him about death rep and about how would that work, how would a person communicate with their daemon if the daemon didn't, if they couldn't hear. And he admitted he never thought about it, but that, you know, if he was sure they'd find a way around it, like... Maybe he, you'd get a, an animal that had hands, you know, some kind of a monkey. So that you could both learn a, a, a sign language, I guess. Maybe you'd get uh, telepathy, I don't know. He also mentioned how he, uh, he identifies as an, an atheist, he's talked about that a lot, but he believes in the supernatural, he believes in fantasy, in wonderful things happening. And, and horrible things as well, because the two go hand in hand, obviously. And how he's, uh, in, even in his old age, uh, remained hopeful because he seems hope is a virtue. Someone asked him about dust, about how he came up with the concept of dust. And he said he was thinking about dark matter, about the Higgs boson particle, about the idea of this um, particle sort of, I don't know, being that important part of the universe and the idea of uh, consciousness is our one question and then it's, it's snowballs. 
someone asked him about his demon and he said that he of what can we do, of what is there to be done, is there anything to be done, uh, what is even happening, because then for most of the time you don't understand what's happening and who's behind it. One of the things that happens in the book is a great big flood, flood, flood? It's a flood, like the, the banks of the river break and the city finds itself and there's several mirrors of war. He talked about how he'd been living in uh, Australia in, I think, the 50s, when there was such a flood, and he was sort of inspired by that. An um, interesting uh, book, because you get uh, a little bit more of, um, of the city, I guess. It presents uh, an even darker uh, side. It brings on new questions. It has little, like he has mentioned, for father of all. Uh, other towns, something like that, about like guts in the river. And I wanted to tell you how it is. There's all these little sparkles of dust in the book.